in uh, uh, all uh, uh, borders area uh, in our country, it's still uh, uh, continue uh, heavy shooting, uh, including uh, Mariupol. Uh, they use uh, they used uh, uh, multiple launch rocket systems. Uh, not only on military, uh, it's all on civilian. A lot of uh, our cities in the eastern part and in the south part uh, of our country under uh, heavy fire from uh, Russian forces. Uh, we have uh, some evidence uh, regarding, uh, uh, how to say, what uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, Russian troops. We have already uh, techniques uh, which are uh, Russian and uh, also uh, we have uh, uh, combatants from Russian side. Uh, I don't know if you uh, uh, can see clearly, it's uh, uh, from our uh, general staff information, it's regarding uh, soldiers uh, from Russia side, which are already uh, uh, seized in uh, uh, Ukraine, in Ukrainian territory. So it's uh, really Russian troops. It's not uh, some uh, somebody from uh, separatist or some something like that. It's not a uh, uh, green man. It's Russian armed forces. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, let me please open the floor for your questions. I think uh, in, just to keep an order, I would ask you to raise your hands. Or you can start to unmute uh, yourselves to, to put your questions. All right, maybe while you are preparing to put your questions, I would uh, also like to uh, inform you that we are in touch uh, with your ambassador, with South African ambassador in Ukraine, and uh, he is uh, keeping in touch with the citizens of South Africa. We don't uh, have any information about uh, the casualties uh, among the foreign citizens. Um, I also would like to uh, thank to all the South Africans who stand today with Ukraine we are supporting numerous um, messages of support um, with the proposals and ideas of how South Africa could support Ukraine. Uh, we, we really feel very strong. <clears throat> yes, please. Good afternoon, Ambassador. My name is Jason yes. Felix I'm from News24. Um, I just have one question for you. Um, what would you like the South African government to do uh, to, to help the situation? Uh, we know it is, a, it is a quite, a, it is quite a, a difficult situation, but what can our government do both here and on the international stage to help Ukraine? and to help avert um, more bloodshed. And just can we just get the, the name of the gentleman sitting next to you, please? Yes, the name of the gentleman is Colonel Kvasiuk. K-V-I-S-I-U-K. Uh, the message, he's the, the defense of attache of, the, of Ukraine in the Republic of South Africa. So uh, today, every government, every country is responsible for the stopping of this war, which intends to change not only the security structure of Europe, but in general, the structure of all the principles of international law uh, in the world. That's why our message is the one single message to every country to condemn the actions of Russian Federation, to stay with support to Ukraine. And we call on every government to impose any sanctions, any kind of sanctions on Russian Federation. Because we strongly believe that 
to bring us to the table of negotiations with Russian Federation, or so to say, to start the diplomatic dialogue in order to bring it to diplomatic solution, we need to force Russian side. And only economic sanctions, strong economic sanctions, uh, can help us to do so. So we would encourage every country to make a firm position and to announce their statements in support of Ukraine and Ukrainian people. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Someone else would want to ask uh, a question. Uh, hello, hello, uh, your, your Excellency uh, Salilo here from Salam Media. Um, I just want to quickly find out: Has there been uh, efforts to to engage with the government of with the government of South Africa? And uh, if not, do you guys have any plans to to engage with the government of South Africa and to see what kind of assistance they could offer going forward? Thank you. Yes, this is the main reason the embassy is working here to sustain a stable dialogue with the government of South Africa. Uh, we are communicating with the Department of International Relations and Cooperation of South Africa, and uh, we are communicating on di through diplomatic channels. And uh, we did request the meeting uh, of myself with the Honorable Dr. Naledi Pando, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and cooperation, international affairs and cooperation, I'm sorry, and uh, with the president of the Republic of South Africa. And, and maybe just a, just a short follow-up questions. Um, are, are you in a position to maybe uh, share what, uh, what the discussion was and uh, what, uh, what, what is the South African government willing to do to, I don't know, in some way help, help the people of Ukraine under the current circumstances? Uh, as of now, starting from this uh, uh, full-scale uh, invasion into Ukraine, since five o'clock in the morning, we didn't receive the message, the official message from South African government, but we really hope to receive it soon. Uh, yesterday, you all uh, could see the statement uh, of the DIRCO, it is on the official website. I will not cite it, you all can uh, check it there. So uh, this was yesterday. Today, uh, it's uh, the point, as we say, of where you are not coming back. So the new strong statement really is expected. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Susan from the Diplomatic Informer magazine. Um, Good I just wanted to find out, Your Excellency, um, uh, the, does the Ukraine have the military strength to resist and counter a full on the Russian invasion? Do you have the, the, the military strength? That's a very important question. I want you all to understand, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, that this war started in 2014. So our military forces being defending and protecting our land since that time, that means that they are fully operated and uh, they are modernly equipped uh, also thanks to the support of uh, our partners and uh, this army has been prepared and it's very strong today i can tell you 100 percent that this is the strongest army in europe but moreover uh, our people and our military forces uh, really stand strong and very motivated uh, in the face of 
this enemy? So the answer is yes, indeed. Thank you. My second question is, are there any external parties involved in fueling the conflict further? If so, what message do you have for them? Uh, there are no such parties. And I think this is the narrative that maybe or surely uh, the uh, Russian Federation would proceed. This is about Ukraine. This is about controlling of Ukraine. And uh, that's why I say that this is happening in our territory. So no other parties but Russian Federation is involved in this aggression. And lastly, Your Excellency, what are the long-term geopolitical consequences of the conflict beyond the two countries and in the broader region? This, the consequences will be very, uh, very strong. And we're not only talking about the violation of international law and uh, the test for the United Nations uh, organization in general. We are talking about such consequences as um, the economical instability, even the food security, if you guess about Ukraine uh, as of biggest country in Europe, one of the biggest producers of wheat and uh, quite a number of other commodities where Ukraine stands in the top 10 in the world. So that's uh, really uh, is very dangerous. Thank you for that question. Well, thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you for answering my questions and we praying and hoping that the situation will get better. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Navella. Thank you. Uh, I see the hand of Peter Dutois. Yes, please. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, a personal question. Are you in contact with your family over there? Do you have family um, that you are fearful for their lives um, and you're very far away from home? How does this make you feel seeing the pictures that we're all seeing on television? Um, and, and, and obviously, you must be concerned for your family and loved ones who who might be in harm's way. Uh, I do have a family in Ukraine and all my staff members, we do have our family uh, members. Uh, we are worried about them. We are trying to be in touch and to support them. We encourage them also to believe in the strength of our army uh, and its ability to protect them. Uh, meantime, being that far away, as you told from from uh, uh, our capital and our land uh, and uh, receiving this very, very, um, how to say it? It's, it's not uh, even the um, touching. It's very mixed emotions that you feel because first of all, you have to keep keeping being uh, diplomatic and strong, but uh, as uh, every citizen you have uh, the strong feelings and responsibility for your country. Uh, the huge support, as I told you, of uh, uh, South African citizens in South Africa here, uh, really, really appreciated uh, the calls, messages. Um, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned that flowers are, uh, are coming to the embassy. So uh, we, uh, we really feel uh, as every human being would feel. But let me tell you that you cannot get used to, to war. But because we are experiencing that since 2014, and because already 14,000 Ukrainians lost their lives, because so many families were, um, they had to, to move from uh, those parts that were taken or annexed by Russian Federation. We have 1.5 million internally displaced people. These are the broken lives. Uh, how many um, people uh, wounded? Uh, it's more than 30,000, correct me, people. So um, you cannot get used to this, but these pictures are already uh, there for many years and 
we live with this and we fight and we still, when I say fight as ambassador, I say that we are fighting with diplomatic means and uh, we, we are ready to work. We are working 24 seven now. And uh, you see, we are open to um, any, any media to, to really bring the message and the importance of it, because it seems that Ukraine is very far from South Africa and it will not affect it. But this is mostly about the general values that we are sharing together, Ukraine and South Africa. Thank you. Sorry, just one last question. Have you been in touch with your Russian counterpart in Pretoria? No. I never Thank met you. him personally, and I think that uh, you mentioned that uh, during uh, all the meetings with media, uh, he prefers not to go to straight dialogue. And frankly speaking, I don't think that I have something to tell to him because their hands are in blood of my people now. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please, if someone wants to put the question, just intervene, just uh, unmute yourself. Okay, this is Peter Fabricius. Peter Fabricius from Daily Maverick. May I ask a question? Sure, good day. Sorry, I've come in a bit late. I thought this was starting at 2.30, uh, 3.30, did it start earlier? Yes, it started at three o'clock, sorry. Oh. But uh, um, you're welcome, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to ask you then, I mean, maybe, uh, so I might have missed that, but um, the, uh, you heard the statement has been issued now by Durko to say that Russia should withdraw from Ukraine. I'm not sure if you saw that. Can you please repeat it? Uh, I'm saying Durko has issued a, a new statement today, just now, on the situation and, and includes a call on Russia to withdraw its forces from uh, Ukraine. I wonder if, if you had seen that and how you respond. Uh, frankly speaking, I'm just checking now. I didn't see it. As you told, it came out maybe just now. Yes. Is it on the official website of Zirko? I saw it on the WhatsApp group. So to be honest, I haven't had a chance to check the, um, the website. <laughs> Um, uh, as of now, I see only the message of, of yesterday. Okay, this one, let me, can I read it to you? Yes, please. Okay, we'll so let's, I'll see if I can find it on my phone, sorry. Uh, I'm, I might just read the relevant passage, which is, um, okay, this is the Republic of Africa is just made at the escalation of the conflict in Ukraine. We regret that this has deteriorated by calls for diplomacy to prevail. Armed conflict will no doubt result in human suffering and destruction, the effect of which will not only affect Ukraine, but right across the world. No country is immune to the effects of this conflict. As the UN Secretary General has indicated, the conflict will have a huge impact on the global economy in a moment when we are emerging from the COVID pandemic, and so many developing countries need to have the space for recovery. This is the part here. South Africa calls on Russia to immediately withdraw its forces from U Ukraine in line with the United Nations Charter, which enjoins all member states to settle the international disputes by peaceful means in such a manner that international peace and security and justice are not endangered. South Africa emphasizes respect for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of states. As a nation bursts through negotiations, South Africa is always appreciative of the potential dialogue has in averting a crisis and de-escalating conflict. In line with our strong commitment to the peaceful resolution of conflict, South Africa urges all parties to devote increased efforts to diplomacy and to find a solution that will help avert further escalation. The door, the, well, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the door of diplomacy should never be closed, even as conflict is broken out. We, all, we urge all parties to approach the situation in a spirit of compromise with all sides respecting international law in the light of Escalating conflict, we call on the to resume diplomatic to 
raised by Russia. Okay. Um, yeah. Calls on all sides to uphold human rights, international law, uh, to encourage implementation of the Minsk agreements. We welcome the work of the normal format, the trilateral contract group, and the OSC. Uh, calls on the Security Council to play its role in resolving the problem. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, this is uh, really the, the fresh one. And uh, I think it's a strong message. And uh, we appreciate this uh, reaction of South Africa. I'm sure that uh, according to the further developments, uh, we, we will see more uh, statements. And uh, I will also inform you of the process of my communication with the government as soon as we uh, uh, have a possibility to, to uh, uh, have this uh, meetings. Thank you. May I ask, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, you... I just want to tell you that we have uh, some six meetings left for our meeting. Uh, meantime, all of you are welcome uh, to, to communicate uh, us and tomorrow uh, the same time, three o'clock, we will organize the press conference again. Yes, sorry, Peter, for interrupting you. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. Um, maybe while I was here, you did uh, have you South Africa to do anything more, uh, like some sort of sanctions against Russia? Or... You know, the G7 will be uh, meeting now and they will be discussing the further sanctions uh, because we. Uh, foreseen uh, this uh, invasion, uh, these sanctions, uh, it's something that uh, has been discussed uh, and I'm sure that the response will be very strong and then Russia will, will feel it. So we, we definitely will see it and we call for other countries also to join um, the uh, democratic uh, world and to say their strong voice through imposing sanctions. Including South Africa. Including South Africa, of course. Yes, we, we officially requested this through diplomatic channels. We call uh, on all the countries of the region to, to follow this example of uh, other countries who already uh, posing sanctions, and you know that sanctions hurt both sides when they are implemented. So it's not easy. It's not very, um, very um, easy decision for the government. We do understand it. Not popular, let's say this. Ladies and gentlemen, four minutes left. Maybe one more question. Sorry, just one for clarity, because uh, it, it broke up on my end. I'm, uh, my apologies, Ambassador. Will you request, will you through diplomatic uh, channels then request the South African government to follow suit and also implement sanctions? Just wanted to confirm yes. that that's yes. what you said. Yes. Thank uh, you. Just now I sent you my private address, uh, email address to the chat. So you're welcome, as I said. I'm open for the discussions with you. Thank you. Thank you. Could, um, Ambassador, could you tell us about your personal situation? Do you have family who are in danger in Kiev? I think I already touched on this. Yes, my family uh, is in Odessa. My family is in Odessa and I personally uh, see, my father is for a former military, and uh, we still live in a small military city. Uh, so, yes, I'm receiving uh, the pictures and messages that uh, don't ask me, I will not share with you. Uh, but um, there are shellings on the uh, both uh, military and civil infrastructure in Odessa. It's very pity. Okay, thank you. Your Excellency. Yes. Hello. Yes, I have two minutes left uh, for this meeting. 
<laughs> and I really would encourage you all, if you want to talk to me personally, I am available for you. Uh, let's keep it uh, short and uh, I uh, hope to see you all tomorrow and I hope that uh, I will have a good news for all of us. Thank you uh, very much for joining us today.